Well, hello there, listener. It looks to me like I spotted myself a fellow collector. Now, I know I like to collect things like posters and T-shirts and action figures of all my favorite video games and TV shows. And Loot Crate makes that possible. And if you're a fan of this show, I know you love all things Fallout. And Loot Crate has a very specific Fallout-type crate. And if you want to take 15% off of your order, head on over to the link in the show notes below and enter Robots Radio at checkout. That's LootCrate.com. Robots Radio presents... Broadcast, a Fallout story. Oh, Sam, good, you're here. I need you to get some of the guys together to go down and look at that super mutant sighting we heard about yesterday. Thanks. I, I really appreciate it. <clears throat> hey, Amy, would you mind to go and get me that, uh... H- hang on. Hmm, interesting. Uh, d- don't don't worry. I- I'll go get it later. Hello. Hello. Is anyone listening? This is Molly Burton. I repeat, this is Molly Burton. Son, I hope you're listening. I mean, it has to be you. No one else could have activated that signal beacon. For the past 20 years, I've been anxiously waiting for this notification. You see, the day I powered down Professor Hamilton, I programmed a distress beacon inside of him. That beacon was only supposed to become active when his ownership parameters changed from Voltec University to you, little bear. So I'm going to take this chance and just hope and believe that it's you and you're listening. I know you must be frustrated and confused. You might even be sitting there trying to communicate back to me. Believe me, son, I understand the frustration. I get the confusion, and before you even try, this is a one-way broadcast, so it would be useless to attempt to respond. You may also be wondering how I'm still alive, and I promise we will have that conversation. It's just that, right now, it isn't the best time. Just have the peace in knowing that I am alive, and I am doing quite well. I'm no longer in West Virginia, but believe me when I say that there were so many days I thought about staying behind and waiting for that vault door to open. But my mission, my objective, it's too critical. And we also knew you would be just fine. 
I've been in sporadic conversation with your overseer throughout the years, so I knew somewhat how great you were doing and how much you were growing up. I mean, let's be honest. You were always a little adventurer. There wasn't an obstacle that you couldn't climb and there was nothing that could ever slow you down. I remember that time when me, you, and your dad were fly fishing in the Ohio River. It had rained the whole week leading up to that weekend, and the current and rapids were so bad that day. But you and your father had planned that trip for a year. Nothing was going to keep us from going. I remember watching as you and your dad would cast back and forth, over and over, and then in a blink of an eye, you just got swept away by the current. Your dad reacted so quickly running alongside you on the riverbank. I know one thing is certain. <laughs> I was not the calm one that day. I was frantic, shouting at your father, Grab him! Grab him! But you never even flinched. You just relaxed and let the water carry you downstream. After what felt like hours but in reality was only a few minutes. I remember looking up as you calmly reached out and grabbed a fallen tree that was in the water, and you crawled right out. <laughs> That's when you got your nickname, Little Bear. Your dad said the way your body crawled out of the water looked like a bear waiting for the salmon floating upstream. All I know is you've always been so brave, and that's how I knew. When I sent you to that vault, no matter what you might face later on, you would always be just fine. I could just go on and on with these stories and memories from when you were little, but we can do that another time. I stated earlier that I'm no longer in West Virginia. I'm currently staying at a small encampment in Washington, D.C., or what the people around here call the Capital Wasteland. There's not much up this way. I mean, the bombs really did a number on this place, but my mission brings me here nonetheless. There is a vault located up here that I'm tirelessly trying to get into communication with, Vault 101, but as of right now, I'm having no luck. When I read through Vault 101's directive and ordinance files, I noticed that this vault was designed to be a self-sustaining residence and closed to the outside indefinitely. But being a former vault tech employee, I'm hoping that I'll be able to coerce my way inside. For what I am trying to do up here, I have no doubt that this vault could be of importance someday. This past year, I've wondered if you had found the holotape I left for you in your dad's old store. I mean, now I know you found it, but I did take a big chance leaving it. I don't know what it was, but something deep inside me just knew you would end up back there one day. So I'm glad I took that chance. Do you remember what I said on the holotape that I left you? Boltec holds all the answers. That is 100% true. And I believe with a bit of hard work, we all can uncover those answers and really make a difference in this new world we live in. In all honesty, that sounds pretty simple, but there's a lot more going on than what meets the eye. For the moment, I need you to keep your focus right where you are in Appalachia. There's so much there that needs to be done. I promise you, little bear, with everything that's in me, that we will all be together again. But, firstly, I need you to write these coordinates down. 38.9072 degrees north. 77.0369 degrees west. Radio frequency 168.87500. This is the location of my encampment. I've established a small settlement right on the outskirts between DC and what used to be Baltimore. I've been able to give shelter and aid to people wandering through. Most recently, it's been people escaping old Pittsburgh, 
or what they now call the pit. From what I'm told, that place is completely controlled by raiders, slavers, and all kinds of just bad people. A few of the people that I've given aid to are actually living down your way now. They were members of a construction workers union here in DC, and they built a settlement down there called Foundation. I've heard great things. I have no doubt that you've probably already been there, but if not, I know it would be a great resource for you. There is one couple I met along the way. Sweet people. The Taylors. Actually, Elsie used to be a pit raider and fell in love with a prisoner named Derek, who she's now married to. She can really hold her own. She proved that through a bloody escape where she killed eight raiders to protect her husband and their little boy. They hadn't been with me at my camp long when the raiders sent a hunting party after them. We set up an ambush that stopped the raiders from continuing to hunt them. Honestly, I hardly did anything. I'll tell you, Elsie sure knows how to handle a gun. So, if you do come across their settlement, make sure to mention that you're my son. I know they will take good care of you. I've told them all about you. <sighs> Anyways, I keep getting sidetracked. Now, I need you to remember those coordinates. It's going to be crucial in how you get into contact with me. I'm here in my radio room every three hours on the dot, starting at 5 o'clock a.m. So, when you find a working radio and are able to reach out, remember those coordinates and times. I will have more information for you when we are able to talk properly. Okay. I've got to go now, son. I'm beyond relieved that you are okay and alive. Professor Hamilton is going to be a great companion to you. <laughs> While he may talk a bit too much, he is extremely loyal. I love you, son. Be safe. And remember, no matter what sky you're under, you'll always be home. You'll always be home. Okay, well, I think that went well. All we can do now is wait and see if he responds with the frequency I gave him. Hey, Amy? Yes, Professor Burton? I'm promoting you to watch her here in the radio room. Um, okay, what exactly does that mean? Well, it means when you see this relay beacon switch from red to green, Flip this switch here, and then come and find me. Um, okay. Yes, yes, ma'am. So, do you think he was listening? Oh, I really hope so. I gave him the coordinates and frequency. Molly, I think it's time that we I tell him that- I know, I know. We will, I promise, when the time is right. This is Brian Gwatney, the creator of the Omega Broadcast, A Fallout Story. I just wanted to take a moment real quick and just say thank you so much for checking out this podcast. I really hope you enjoy listening to these stories just as much as I enjoy making them. If you do enjoy this podcast, please let me know by liking, sharing, and even through your comments. Thank you again so much for your support. Remember, there's a place for you at the end. Omega. Well, all right. Um, it's that time of the episode now where we drop some Patreon shout outs. And um, luck would have it that we have a new patron supporting the show. Trizzle plays. And that's really awesome. I'm actually sitting here with my son, 
baby bear Bo. And we were going through the Patreon account and we noticed that we have another patron supporter and it really means a lot. So Trizzle Plays, we just want to say thank you and give you an awesome shout out. Bo, do you want to shout out Trizzle Plays and say thank you? Trizzle, Trizzle Plays and thank you. <laughs> All right. All right. It really does mean a lot. Um, remember, no matter what tier you support, every little bit goes to help make this show great um, so we can continue to have great sound effects great backing music and awesome branding and different things through our social media accounts that all comes from you guys who support our patreon so if you're not a member of our patreon and you want to be a patron of the show and help support it just the the patreon link is in the show notes below you click on that and join us we have a few tiers that you can join we actually have some cool benefits for if you join the tiers like um i think one of them is a one-of-a-kind show um, vinyl sticker that you would get as well. I think another one is a um, -a one-of-a-kind show poster that you would get on one of the tiers. But again, it doesn't matter what tier you join. Every little bit helps, and we really appreciate it. Remember, you have a place at the end. Omega. Looking for a Fallout audio drama? It's True Vault Escapades! That's right, follow the death-defying adventures of Detective Walter Camry and his vault girl Bunny as they solve the Wasteland's biggest mysteries. From the dramatic Texas prologue to the high-stakes world of New Vegas, Walter and Bunny risk it all to crack everything from murders, slaver syndicates, and corruption at the highest level in post-nuclear America. True Vault Escapades. It's a Fallout show with a detective twist. Look for True Vault Escapades wherever you get your podcasts. Hey friends, this is Robots, the creator of the Robots Radio Podcast Network and host of the two original shows on the network, the Fallout Lorecast and the Elder Scrolls Lorecast. These two shows have rocketed up the iTunes charts. They both together have over 155 star reviews in only a couple of months with bite-sized episodes that take you step by step through the background of the games and the game worlds. They're thought-provoking, well-produced, and a lot of fun. I recommend you go check them out at robotsradio.net or on any podcast, reader, podcatcher, whatever you use, iTunes, Spotify. Again, that's the Fallout Lorecast and the Elder Scrolls Lorecast, available everywhere. In a world where solid-state electronics and vacuum tubes are still meta, people never stop loving atomic-powered everything. A chosen 500 stepped inside a subterranean vault to be spared the nuclear horror of the inevitable Great War. 25 years later, they emerge after the fallout settles to retake Appalachia. Among them, two former rivals whose blood feud will tear West Virginia apart and their epic struggle for survival. Chad, a vault bro who has a strength of 15, an intelligence of 2, and is a complete wasteland dickhead. Simon, a complicated anti-hero who chooses light and hope, but accidentally becomes a cannibal, and wakes up naked and afraid with a Scorch Beast Queen after a date goes terribly wrong. What? I mean, it's a wild wasteland, right? This dark humor radio drama will have you driving off the road and crawling out from under the fallout. Two men. One wasteland. And so many nukes. Chad, a Fallout 76 podcast. Rated R. Now streaming on your holotape player podcasty thing. Are you interested in keeping up with all the latest gaming news, but you're just too busy? Well, I've got the podcast for you. The Robots Radio Show is a daily gaming news show where I bring you in a quick format all the top news about video games, nerd culture, and even the best deals. You can find the Robots Radio Show on Spotify and Apple and all the different podcatchers. And you can join me live, twitch.tv slash robots radio at around noon Eastern every day. Come talk about game stuff with me. Again, that's the Robots Radio Show.
Available everywhere. Have you ever wondered how deep the Elder Scrolls lore rabbit hole goes? Have you got a grasp of the basics and want to find out more about the universe? Written in Uncertainty is here to help you. We'll be mixing in philosophy, theology, and whatever other theory is useful with Elder Scrolls texts to untangle some of the biggest questions in the series, like what are dragon breaks, how does Chim work, where did the Dwemer go, and more. Check us out at writteninuncertainty.com or find Written in Uncertainty on any podcatcher. Thanks for listening and catch you later in the grey maybe of Tamriel. You've been listening to a Robots Radio podcast. Smart shows for interesting people. Check out all the shows at robotsradio.net.